So let's face it, a lot of people, pretty much 90% of the people I've worked with or had a chance to work with on video in the last decade of doing this don't like themselves on camera. They don't like to see themselves on camera. Even my stuff that I used to shoot about five to seven years ago, I'm like, wow, I had a lot more hair back then, <laughs> a little less bags under the eyes, right? It's a natural, natural feeling that, you know, humans, we don't like to eat, see ourselves and especially on video. Now, the unfortunate part is, well, there's nothing you can really do about it. There's no magical trick to do anything. And so that, the biggest thing over there is actually just getting used to, you know, being on video and actually talking that way. The big thing that I also hear past, like not, you know, liking yourself seeing on video is the past experiences. A lot of business folks that were ever interviewed or were ever put into a situation where you had to record some video usually was in a big studio with, you know, multiple cameras. There's a whole bunch of people around you and, you know, lots of lights and lots of mics. And you know what? It's intimidating. Even for myself to this day, I do not go into a studio. I'm actually in this awesome, you know, space right now. It's on the weekend. Nobody's here. Nobody's here looking at me. I actually prefer shooting videos on my own because you know what? I can be myself and I don't have to worry about somebody judging me, etc. So it's a big important piece too to make the environment. That's why the smartphones are so good because they're also less intimidating than big, big cameras you know, in the past. So past experiences play a big role in that. So if you're helping somebody, you know, do videos, if it's a customer, a colleague, or it doesn't matter who it is, you know, ask them about their past experiences. Have they ever done video? And you, the first thing that you want to do is to say, look, this is not it, right? We're using smartphones. They're, they're non-threatening. It's very, it's very, you know, the smartphones had a, a great dynamic to build our own confidence in the business world because we use them so much in our uh, kind of personal life on, you know, vacations, etc., and Christmases, you know it, you take a ton of footage. And so a lot of people are more comfortable in, you know, that scenario. You know, people often ask me, it's like, what should we wear? What do I need to wear? I said, I always say this, wear the stuff that makes you feel confident. Wear the stuff you like. Uh, if you've seen my videos in the past, I always wear these. I always wear a shirt and a vest. I like it, it's super simple. <laughs> I have a, a bunch of shirts, mostly white, and a whole bunch of, you know, vests and I can swap them out and that's what I like to wear. It's super easy. When it comes to, you know, delivering the information. So when you have your talking points and I have my talking points even here on my sheet of paper, right? I follow the same process that I, I've been teaching you here in these lessons. When you deliver the bullet points, I don't want you to memorize. Memorizing something and trying to focus on what you're going to say um, is a way to get very, very uncomfortable very quickly, right? And as soon as you get uncomfortable, you start looking like a robot and it starts looking really weird, right? So I always gotta look at first, you know, to be really, really comfortable, don't ever talk about the stuff you don't know. The stuff that you don't talk about on a regular basis, you're not passionate about. Same thing if you're trying to help somebody, you know, interview them, or you're trying to, you know, uh, get them on video, a customer or anybody, if they don't know, or if they're not comfortable naturally talking about them, having them say something just because you want to capture it on video, it's going to suck. It's just, it's just an unnatural thing. So that person has to be a subject matter expert for them to be comfortable. And that also includes you uh, when you're on, on camera. Here's the thing. I, I always look at it that when I'm shooting videos, like I'm having a cup of coffee with a person, one person. And if I talk to them about something, I can tell myself, hey, I could have said something better. And I could have made that better. Could have, should have, would have. The reality, we don't do that because we're not going to re-engage that coffee meeting, right? But in the land of videos and, and having that record button and having almost unlimited storage capacity, we tend to get into the trap of re-recording and re-recording and getting another take and get another take. The fact is, after about two or three takes, it's a diminishing curve and it's going to suck even more and your confidence is gonna actually get lower and lower because you're like, why can I not just say those couple words? Forget that, be who you are. If you make mistakes, if you look around, if you scratch your head, if you say, um, all of us do, it's okay. It's a natural thing we do in face-to-face -face conversations every single day. So why should it be any different if you're on video, right? Like for example, I'm a, 
immigrant kid, English is my second language. I screw up grammatical things and verbally all the time. And I'm sure even if I put something in this course, there's gonna be some form of spelling or grammatical mistakes because my brain just doesn't see it. I'm not gonna worry about it. That's who I am, right? I'm not, it's not gonna impact for me teaching you the core principles to make quality you know, videos using smartphones and this simple process. I actually don't do second or third takes. It's all actually a first take because I know obviously this content, I've been doing it for a decade, so it's super automatic for me, but I let go of that kind of anxiety around trying to get it perfect, right? I know what I need to do. I got my talking points. I know what I need to hit and don't have any people around you that have kind of no value to bring it in when you're recording. A lot of the times we have a whole bunch of extra people there, especially with a bigger team. They want to see how you do or they want to see the recording. It scares the crap out of me. I get super nervous when I got people looking at me. I don't like it at all. And I've been shooting videos for decades. So do me a favor. If you have to have somebody there holding the videos or holding a smartphone, that's the only person that should be there outside of the person that you're videoing or you're filming. If you're shooting videos on your own, do it on your own. Make sure there's nobody else around you. It's gonna be a lot easier to have that. So if somebody, a boss or somebody else wants to see the filming, just politely say no, because it makes everybody nervous. And again, this isn't Hollywood, right? This isn't a big set where you need all those people to be there, okay? So just to recap, remember to have confidence is you gotta just start with video. Be who you are, talk about the stuff that you do on a regular basis. Don't talk about stuff that you don't know, right? You're not an actor. 90% good enough. The little snippets, the little issues that we all have when we talk or on, um, we're looking around are 100% okay. They're natural part of what we do and communicate in every day. Don't change it just because you're on video. Clothes, wear clothes that are comfortable, that make you confident. That's the best way to do it. And also minimize the people around you. Just focus on the couple people that are gonna be, you know, uh, videotaping or using the, or capturing the footage. And if you're shooting videos alone, well, hey, do it alone. And all that stuff is gonna really boost your confidence and being more confident on videos, all right?